Hello, I'm Mike Russell from MusicRadioCreative.com. In today's Adobe Audition Preferences mini-series video, I'm going to look at the spectral displays. If you are really enjoying these videos, do make sure to hit like on this one. Also subscribe. And if you never want to miss another video, ding that bell so we can stay in contact. Now, over here in Adobe Audition, one of my favorite displays, the spectral frequency display will show you all the frequencies uh, inside your audio from bass to mid to high end, sibilance around here. It's really, really handy. And in preferences, control or command comma to bring it up really quickly, you can actually find that there are uh, spectral frequency display uh, options here. First of all, you've got the windowing function, and basically I leave this on Blackman Harris, but if I change it, you'll see it ever so slightly changes the appearance of spectral, but really not enough for most users to actually notice a difference. There is a slight difference there, seeing a slight change to how spectral display looks, but default is Blackman Harris. What you really want to know is the spectral resolution. Bring it down to 32, and it goes all blocky and 8-bit, and it's quite hard to work with, although it might highlight some of the uh, problem frequencies a little bit more for you. If you go really high end, like up here to 4096, you'll see you get a more detailed spectral frequency display. Uh, you're seeing a lot more resolution there, essentially, in the spectral frequency display. I'm going to stick, though, with 512, the default. Decibel range is helpful. If you find that you're not seeing enough information, pump this up and it makes it brighter. You can see much more information now there. Or bring it down, but the more you bring it down, the less you're going to see. You're only going to see the really strong frequencies. Again, 132 is a happy medium on that. Something I find really handy is showing the grid lines on here. You can see them very faintly turn the opacity up and look at this. This can be super, super helpful for identifying sibilance problems. For instance, you can follow these grid lines along uh, on this little S sound in my voice. And I can say, okay, the sibilance is occurring between 10K and 5K. And then I can set up a de using those grid lines, a very easy way to measure on the spectral frequency display. Generally, I leave those off, but there may be times you want to switch them on. Play only selected frequencies when spectral frequency selection exists. What this means is if I grab the marquee selection tool and I select just the sibilance, it plays just the sibilance. The same as if I just select some of the bass on my voice, it only gets the bass, whereas if that's unticked, it'll just play everything. So really, I like to have that ticked because it helps me to zero in on problem frequencies there. So moving over, that's the spectral frequency display. This box here is for the pitch display, which is a different kettle of altogether. It's this one up here and basically shows you the musical notes of your audio. Now, this is just speech, so there's not much music going on here. Uh, but if you are recording a singer, for instance, this display can be super handy to you. Uh, and again, very similar to what we had before with the frequency display. You've got the resolution, bring it to 32. It goes all blocky and strange, in my opinion. Bring it up higher and the resolution gets more detailed, of course. But again, I like to leave this uh, around the default uh, around, you know, you can put it around 128. That's probably a little bit too low. Uh, so you can go up to whatever really is suitable for you. 1024, that kind of makes it nice and clear. But actually, in my opinion, probably around 2048 is going to be about the sweet spot there uh, for your spectral pitch display. Decibel range again, hots it up or cools it down. Uh, so again, just leave that on default. In my opinion, it works pretty well, 75 dB. And show the grid lines. You can see the grid lines are on. This is quite handy. You can turn up the opacity if you like, and then you can see all the notes over here. Uh, like you got G3, uh, G sharp, uh, A3, all of that. And you can just follow the grid lines across and uh, it's super, super handle handy. I usually leave these on 30, the default. That's absolutely fine for me. And that is spectral displays in a nutshell inside the Adobe Audition preferences menu. If you have any questions, do post them down below and make sure to check out my courses where you can learn everything about Adobe Audition. I've got audio production, podcast production, and also I've got uh, live streaming courses as well open for enrollment now at mrc.fm forward slash learn. That is mrc.fm forward slash learn.